All right, good day, brethren, and those who may be watching. Today's study and talk will be on the biblical John the Baptist, referencing him, what was his main message and purpose. So we'll be going over a few scriptures in God's Word. And this is uh, also for the potential Catholic viewer that may be out there that's uh, needs to understand things from a biblical understanding please please watch this I hope uh, your heart and mind will be open to more truth truth about God and your understanding and uh, you can truly believe God and not in the organized religion or man's way and men's understanding but what God has to say through his word and through John the Baptist who I'm sure Catholics have probably heard that name so let's get into it we'll start in Isaiah Chapter 40. I'm going to read a few verses. 1 through 8. Follow along. It says here, Comfort ye my comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry, and said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And just by happenstance, it is springtime here. There's a lot of fresh green grass and beautiful flowers. And uh, in a few months, they're going to fade. Interesting. Of course, so those few verses, there's a lot of different uh, dispensations kind of mentioned in there. Because Jerusalem is going to uh, going to receive some more uh, hardships in the future, i.e., the time of Jacob's trouble. That's been another talk for another day. I have discussed that before, I believe, in some of my previous videos. Now turn to Matthew chapter three. But the takeaway from Isaiah 40 was verse three. Now we're going to Matthew three and read along. Going to do the whole chapter. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of cam camel's hair and a leather leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea, all the region about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. Key word there, repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, which he has, which is the body of Christ, the Gentile church. We'll get into that a little more. And now also the axe is laid up to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Now pay attention. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Two different baptisms there, by the way. The Holy Ghost and with fire. You don't want the fire. Whose fan is in his right hand, and he shall thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, eternal torment, punishment hell, lake of fire. 
Verse 13, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and saith unto him, Suffer it to be so for now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then, then he suffered him. We'll discuss that verse 2 in Luke 16 in a second. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight up away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lightning, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 11. Another chapter, we'll read the whole thing. It says here, And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do and hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor of the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went out ye into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. And the kingdom of heaven right now is uh, basically the earth, more, I'd say specifically, uh, Israel, the land that God gave them, and uh, the violent take it by force. But God is coming back in the future to the kingdom of heaven, and it will be heaven on earth. That's for another study. Verse 13 For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John, and if you will receive that this is a, a Elias, which was for to come, he that hath ears to hear, ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced; we have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Charosan! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in thee have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre or Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which were done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, as have revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. A lot of stuff there. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn of the Lord, people. Catholics that may be watching, and others that aren't saved, worldly people. Learn of the Lord. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And don't get caught up with a lot of the quote-unquote religion out there. 
you won't learn of the Lord that way. You learn of him by, with a repentant heart and mind and belief and faith and asking the Lord to show, show him to you. And of course, you get a copy of God's Word, which is the perfect preserved Word of God, the King James Bible, the authorized version. Now Luke 16, just to discuss a previous verse, a couple things to read here. Luke 16, 15, 16. It says here, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before man, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. We're no good. The law of the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. That's a dispensational marker there too. The law of the prophets were until John. And Jesus came on the scene. Jesus is coming in the flesh. We'll discuss that in a minute. That's why Jesus had to be baptized of John, fulfilling the law and all that. It's a lot of heavy studies, but uh, we're just covering the basics. Praise the Lord. Now turn to Acts chapter 15. We'll read from a few verses, 6 through uh, 11. Acts 15. It says here, And the apostles and the elders came together to consider of this matter. And when they heard that much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Jesus fulfilled that, as we just read Luke. Jesus fulfilled that uh, the penalty of the law. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Now let's turn to Colossians real quick. Colossians 2, and we'll read from uh, 4 through 12. It says this, And this I say, lest any man shall beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joined and beholding your order, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Three things to be aware of. Tradition of men, the rudiments of the world, vain deceit, just outright lies and nonsense. It's uh, becoming more and more apparent that the world is going after all those three and not after Christ. Even uh, the biggest so-called so-called religious thing that it's not Christian but calls itself Christian is uh, built on traditions of men. The universal quote-unquote church. Yeah. Verse 12 or verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Once you get to know the Son you'll know the Father and vice versa. Verse 9. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In him also you are, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism also. You are risen with him through faith for the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And ye being dead in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now let's turn to uh, Acts 11. We're going back a bit. I just pray that especially the brethren will understand all these verses and the connections, but uh, pray for those that don't quite have the Holy Spirit, and uh, who don't, I should say, 
that your understanding and your heart will get right. Repentance and this will all start to make sense. Acts 11. It's kind of like a riddle to the lost. Until you really truly repent, uh, a lot of the stuff won't make sense and it just will go in one ear, out the other. Hearing they can't hear. It's like a riddle to some people. It's not nothing that I'm boasting about. I might heart and desire is that all men would come that know the Lord and that's the Lord's desire. He's long suffering that all men should be should come to repentance. That's in uh, Peter. And that's my desire too, but they need to have a, they need to repent. I keep saying that word, but for, for repentant heart. It's not going to make sense. Anyways, I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail here. Acts 11. I get dis distracted sometimes. Acts 11, six, 16 through 18. It says here, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. And yes. Now, First uh, Peter 3. Go well, there real quick. It's the gift of God. You're hearing these things. Gift, repentance. Hopefully it's all making sense. John's point. First Peter three eighteen through twenty two says here for Christ also have once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. The like figure wherein to even baptism, baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away the, fl the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers be made subject unto him. John baptized with water, but we saints of God, in this time with the church of God, we're baptized by the Holy Ghost and it comes through repentance and belief and faith and asking and receiving that gift of God. Now let's finish with 2 John a few verses and the point being that John the Baptist's message I would say this is me summarizing a few things is believe on the Son the Lord Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh he is greater, like John said, he's not even worthy to for, uh, undo his latches on his shoes or sandals. He's the Son of God. And uh, unfortunately, Israel at the time rejected him for the most part. Now we'll finish with 1 John 1 through 9. It says here. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found my children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. Think about, uh, real quick, about the vain tradition and deceit and all that we just read. Yeah. Who's the rock but that we receive a full reward? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he, or he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he of the Father and the Son. 
If they're coming unto him, bring not this doctrine, receive him not in your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bid him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. There's a lot of people that will say they know God, but they don't acknowledge the Son, or vice versa. And they won't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, and Jesus is the Son of God. And that was John's point too, preaching to the Jews in the wilderness about uh, the coming of the Lord. And that's kind of like our mission too in a sense. We're in the, this world which is kind of, it is like a wilderness, preaching to the few souls that may hear and receive the Lord and he will give them the gift of eternal life. You must have a repentant heart, uh, sincere, true belief, and call with your mouth on the Lord Jesus Christ or you will be baptized with that fire and that's an eternal fire you can ignore it all you want right now but the time will come the hourglass will run out and when that time comes and that hourglass is empty you'll be in the fire and I don't know how to say it anymore like how to express it more with a greater concern but it's serious the Lord God is serious hell is real the fire is coming but you don't have to go you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ the death burial resurrection for your sins the just for the unjust I just pray that you make the right choice and your hearts and your minds get right and that's a blessing the save life the life of a Christian in this church age there's a lot of trials and tribulations in the world, a lot of trouble, unfortunately, because, like I say, the kingdom of God is full of violence right now. We're waiting for the return of the king. Unlike that cheap Hollywood movie, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, this is, uh, which could be an allegory, I don't know, I don't care to get into that. The real return of the king is the Lord Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, if you're not uh, if you're not right, uh, the king is going to smite you. And he's going to toss you into hell. Well, your soul, the eternal you. The soul is eternal, by the way. You don't just die and go to sleep. Like a lot of these cults that teach with their vain traditions, Jehovah's Witnesses, and others. They don't know the Word of God, and it's uh, too bad. Pray that they would get right, but uh, some people, their hearts and minds have been hardened so so much so that I uh, don't know. Anyways, brethren, quick study, John the Baptist, a few verses to go over. Pray it's been a blessing to you. It is for me. It's very refreshing to get into the Word of God. I enjoy doing these studies. I thank him for it. All praise and glory to him. And yeah, just uh, pray for me, brethren, that I can continue to do this. And I uh, pray you are all well in the body of Christ. Even though uh, times are tough, we've been through a couple really rotten years. But uh, it's meant to be. So uh, don't lose that joy. Don't lose that peace. Pray for each other. Continue to pray for me. Anyways, that's it. God bless you all. To the brethren, of course. And to those that aren't saved, I pray you get right. Bye-bye.